just outside the doors of the Gullah Grub, another part of their rich history lives in the hands of Jerry Taylor. Jerry is an internationally known authentic sweetgrass and bulrush basket weaver, and most weekends and quite a few weekdays, you can find her sitting on this porch pulling, turning, and twisting hand-picked material into beautiful baskets using a technique that originated in Sierra Leone, West Africa. In fact, this technique of weaving cannot be found in a book. The secrets to weaving these baskets have been passed down from person to person, generation to generation, from Africa to America for more than three centuries. Jerry learned the technique from a very special lady. For me to have gotten started with this, um, I was taught by my grandmother. Um, we, we lived in Mount Pleasant. Uh, when I first got started with this, it was um, in Boone Hall Plantation where we lived at the time. And um, we got started, you know, doing basket. And the baskets take a lot of effort and a lot of patience. Like a small basket, how long would that normally take you? Well, there is, you know, it's a question that people ask that you cannot give an answer to. Basket take time to make. I can't say it's going to take 40 hours in whatever because it depends on the style, it depends on the size of a basket, but this is not something that we time. It's never about the time when it comes to the Africans. It's about getting the work done. So it's whatever time it takes to get that piece done that you're working on. We don't have any particular time. It's from beginning of a basket to the ending of a basket. That's what it takes. It's amazing to watch how the age techniques of her African ancestors can create something so beautiful and new, one twist at a time. Even the spoon Jerry uses relates to the past. Hundreds of years ago, instead of the spoon, they used to use animal bones. Bones from like maybe a pig or a cow. And then they switched over to nails and glass. And to this day though, no matter the tool one chooses to use to make these gorgeous baskets, the tool itself is still called the nail bone. In, in these, these um, baskets, in the materials, you have to get it just right. You know, um, you know, after cutting or pulling our materials, when getting the pine straw, when it comes to the palmetto, everything has to be done just right in order for we to do these baskets. It has to have a certain flexibility in order for us to get it just the way we need it. Yeah, so, you know, the, um, the, the sweet grass has to be dried. The bulrush after cutting it needs to be dry. The palmetto, it has like a moisture in it that it has to come out of it before we use it. So everything that we use has to be done and has to be dry in a certain way in order for us to do it, you know, use it. It takes time, patience, and a little thing we call physical aptitude. Oh, it's physical. <laughs> It's physical. Yeah, um, I climbed, I climbed, you know, the tree in order to cut the very center of the palmetto tree in order for me to use it to, you know, um, make the baskets. And what beautiful baskets they are. Each one made with special attention by Jerry, one basket at a time. After all of the hard work and time that she puts into making these baskets, I had to ask her one question. I wondered what she thought her grandmother would say. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a tradition, you know, and, and this is what we have done. But the wonderful thing that I, you know, could remember, you know, that my grandmother had have taught me, it still, you know, um, give me that appreciation to know that my grandmother have taught me all it is, you know, into, you know, collecting material as well as making the baskets. So she would probably say, job well done. Job well done. Job well done. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That was great. Woo. A job well done indeed. At the end of the day, Jerry invited me to a backyard party. No, a house party. Well, well, maybe a picnic. I'm not sure what you would call it. Let's just say she took me to see some great people on the sea islands for a great time, great music, and again, some great eating. 
There were even two stocked electric refrigerators out in the backyard just for our convenience. It really was a wonderful time with people that I seem to feel like it's family. Jerry Taylor continues to make her baskets on the porch of the Gullah Grub. And if you'd like to purchase one or more of these beautiful baskets and you'd like to have more information, here's where you can write.